uh, Kubernetes co-working, cloud native, all things Kubernetes. Uh, today we're going to be doing, I'm going to be wrapping up my proposal. I already sort of wrapped it up. I'm just trying to put it all in a single file. Um, so I have something to present and kind of the exhaustive list of everything that everybody might want to know. Uh, the, I talked to everybody about it on like last week and they turned out they wanted, they, they wanted the details. They wanted to know why I made the conclusions I did and, um, stuff. So, uh, so that's what we're going to be going with. Um, and then I have a couple, a couple of example, um, I have a couple of example, uh, Kate's convention Git repos that I'm going to be using as examples uh, to demonstrate, you know, to demonstrate what's possible, etc. So today I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be probably I, I'm, I'll probably take a break in here somewhere, but I'm going to be going from uh, what is it, two forty-five to something like three forty-five, forty-five. So we'll see how long it goes. Uh, I'm probably going to, have to take a break in there somewhere uh obviously and let's say in fact let's do that let's just trim it let's trim this particular time down to um let's trim this time down a little bit down so to keep it to keep it 90 minutes or so uh if i don't do that i will fall over dead because i end up working so fast and intensely during the two hours that i that if i don't take a break i fall over <laughs> i think it's so tired so, and that's probably better for y'all too, because you want to, you want to see me more intensely working on something instead of just kind of screwing around. Although I get off topic all the time. It's really easy to get me off topic. I had a great walk, by the way, speaking of being off topic, we had a great, um, AMA walk out in my normal, my normal little neighborhood here. And that's going to be a regular thing. I really look forward to, it. um, watch the schedule for that and let's get to it. So... But last we left off, we, I was consolidating all my Zettelkast and notes uh, related to my conclusions relating to the Kubernetes Application Management Convention. So again, I'm going to, every one of these VODs, I'll start this way. So the TLDR on this is, I, the, there's just too many ways to install Kubernetes applications. I've been asked to, to audit the ones that we have in our infrastructure. Uh, these are not user land applications. These are Kubernetes infrastructure applications like, you know, node feature discovery, um, JupyterHub even, um, uh, GPU feature discovery, Tekton, Elasticsearch, things like that, as well as our own internal cron jobs. We need to figure out a way to manage those. And we've, we've been asking a lot of questions about how they should be managed. We have our own tool that we've been using internally for some time. The guy that started the tool, created the tool, it's a nice tool, but the guy that made the tool is, is gone. And we've decided that we don't want to continue to use that tool. Um, mostly because it adds a layer of abstraction and unnecessary learning on top of Helm. Um, and frankly, Helm, we've discovered, adds a layer of unnecessary abstraction and complexity on top of just plain old Kubernetes resources. So my... Conclusion in the proposal is to make, after talking to several industry experts uh, in the stream, actually, uh, members of the cloud native board, uh, authors, um, senior architects, uh, all people who have been in the Kubernetes space for a long time. They're not new to the space and just, you know, accepting home as is. These are a lot of people. Um, people who are on the home team at one point and now are not, and now they're, de they're developing alternatives to home. Uh, and the overwhelming consensus uh, there's only one really substantial dissenter in the people that I've interviewed, and, and that's somebody who uses Helm for uh, an investment bank, and they put everything into Helm. Uh, but having gone through Helm and having experienced a bunch of problems with it firsthand, uh, and as I mentioned, the, the, the inconsistent and just shitty Helm charts that are out there, we've, I've decided that I don't, even though I learned how to make a plugin as a part of this process, the Helm plugin, I was going to use that for our validation for OPA Gatekeeper. Uh, in advance before having to apply it in the cluster. And we decided to just use the cluster for that and do, do more dynamic security vetting and stuff like that of running applications as opposed to trying to vet them before they make it in. And then because of all of that, we've decided that, that my official recommendation is going to be let's not use Helm if we can get away with it. Uh, and anytime we have to use Helm, make sure you have a copy of Helm with the Git repo, keep everything in its own Git repo, and and that came down that 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 boils down to the the most important takeaway from 
Uh, the Kate Sap conventions are right here. Provide a Git repo for each thing. Use a consistent Git repo prefix. Uh, provide a detailed readme with a description. I mean, a lot of this stuff just goes without saying, but you need to say it, otherwise you get a mono repo piece of shit like we have right now. Uh, keep a vendor copy of the original application. Uh, document the following administrative procedures. Now, I'm talking about procedures that people do, not necessarily a script. If you want a script, it fine, but don't you know remove the maintainers of it, the admins, uh, unnecessarily from the task at hand when they can just use whatever the the tool is. So fetch it, understand it, be able to flatten it, look at it. This is not steps that you would normally do, by the way, with like an APT package. Uh, this is why Helm can't call itself a package manager and not be lying because it is it's a total lie. Configure, install, upgrade, uninstall, and check. Check for new stuff. And we're not doing that at all right now. We're not doing any checks for new versions, um, which you should be, be a part of your proposal uh, of any process. Add a section with related reading. Maintain a list of all the installed applications. So you need to have a list slash manifest that has everything so you know what to check on, You know what, when did, what to loop on. Um, and the rest of this document is just a bunch of thoughts and stuff that I've been pulling together from my Zettelcast and repo uh, that discuss the reasons for this. I had to make them suitable for work and remove F-words and stuff. <laughs> but um, for the most part, it's just taken off my notes. And I, as I'm picking up the work I left off early in the morning. I I need to find and make sure I didn't miss anything. I, I've written a lot of stuff in my Zettelcast and, and I want to make sure that I'm not missing any relevant um conclusions uh the, the important conclusions were that you should use git and not shun it helm shuns git doesn't use git at all which is just stupid just fucking stupid um uh kubernetes app metadata so this talks about what the app metadata is this is data that you would put in a yaml file i'm suggesting uh in fact i didn't put that into my i need to put that up here add a section keep a vendor account provider me um i need to add this uh, add, uh, let's see, provide, provide a, uh, consistent, um, a meta data file. So my example is, um, Kate's app, Kate's app .yaml. And this is documented, um, down below. Um, I need to actually add that to the main one. Yeah, let's see. I need to edit uh, Kate's app. My Zet. My Zet. So it's a really typical. It's a typical process to have a, a Zet old cast and then to draw on it for writing. Uh, keep a vendor copy, provide a metadata file. Oh, well, I, this is not the same. What the hell? Bedroom. What? Uh huh? Oh. Not the yeah, I did. Oh, boy. Um, it just smells like rose hips. <laughs> she just, she wears, she deliberately wears grandma perfume. <laughs> I joke with her about that all the time. She's the epitome of grandma chic, but whatever. Provide a metadata file. I'm talking about my wife, by the way. Keep a keep a vendor copy of your original application. I think I need to. I think I I I I don't know why I didn't get any of this. I'm really glad I looked at it. Yeah, because I added some things to the convention. And all right, so we're yanking that. Yes. Uh, shoot. What is going on in the other room? I hear loud noises. I hear loud noises. All right. Wait, what? Wait, what? God damn it. This is why you can't. Okay. I don't want to explain what just happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. So delete, 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 delete. I I hope they're all there. We're gonna find out. Bang bang. Maxwell silver hammer came down upon her head. Shit. 
sheet add yeah I mean whatever I'll just I'll just keep it the same it's fine it's fine I've got the manifest part though and that's not in now it's the hard part about keep maintaining a Zettel and a document it's like you edit the document like fuck I should put that in my Zettel too Provide a metadata file get that give a vendor copy to regional application got that uh if it's helm or whatever uh use a consistent previous we got that tag tag each version with some versioning yes for to get repo for each application yes i see the server stuff wasn't even there uh what tiles do we have Remember the traces from the application with cluster yes um there maintain uh but this uh keep ah keep a manifest of all keep a manifest uh, of all apps apps in own uh, get repo uh huh huh for example Kate's apps and that's 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 the fundamental part of the proposal right there so I gotta make sure that's all there um all right so we're using git we're embracing git we are making metadata files um conventional metadata so this is just my standard full name short name title version repo maintainers includers includes um urls why summary or just why no summary or description uh why no cube version so again the reasons i came to these these things uh vendoring uh when necessary so so vendoring is is when you take a copy of the thing and instead of forcing the people to go download it that time traveler you can go ahead and just just use it as is and just go get it that way vendoring is the process of saving internal dependencies with one's own code Kubernetes app conventions leverage the vendoring approach um so yeah uh acquiring these external resources can be included in a fetch action uh helm deployment from hell reality check helm is not a package manager helm starts on packages okay we did all this um okay i think i've got enough operate lifecycle manager is dangerous so why not to use that uh Operator framework. Uh, operator last one is dangerous. All right. Uh, we're going to go through that. That's done. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. This is only keep it manifest. Wait, what? Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Um. Do, 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 do. Oh, which one is this? All right. So, yep. No, I'm going to do a AP and send it to YYY. Uh huh. And then over here, we're going to do Z edit Kate's app. So, I'm going to go edit my, my master Z. And I'm going to do bang, 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 PPP. I mean, sorry. Bang, bang, PPP. And delete you. All right, so I, mean, I don't know if I need all this other stuff in there. Um, I should probably put under related. Yeah, let's see this. Yeah, keep synchronized with Kate's app. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good job, Rob. Okay. Yes, Helm procedure. Uh, I'm actually. All right, so let's go back and look through the titles for this week. And see what I have. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, actually, yes, we have that right. No, 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 no. Metadata added it. Uh, package management. Uh, package management will never work in Kubernetes. Um, this is his own write-up, so I might include it. 
Uh, all right, I have to read this and decide whether it needs to go into, you know what, it does. I already know it does. So let's do that. We're going to have to come back here and and do this. Um, I'm going to put yet another file in here. This is Again, this is growing into a big old file, but, but this is like the final submissions. Um, all right. Uh, bang, bang. Uh, Zet source. And we're going to pull that in. Package management will never work in Kubernetes. Um, okay, I have to read this to make sure there's no fucks in it. <laughs> so... Kubernetes is not a Linux distro. Uh, I don't know if there's a better way to communicate my frustration with Helm and those approaches. <laughs> Cheap guy. <laughs> Fuck. There's not enough fucks. Um, yeah. Fuck you very much. Kubernetes is not a fucking Linux distro. Stop treating it like it. Uh, the term package management popularized wrongly by the Helm project does not relate to Kubernetes and should be avoided. Uh, there was supposed to be a slash in there. Where? Where? A fuck? A, a fuck? Like a, a f, f slash? A fuck slash? A slash fuck? <laughs> I never said I was suitable for work. <laughs> I just... I if you you accepted the risk when you said you clicked on this is a mature rated, I need to put the eighteen plus thing in my like name. <laughs> should, should I should I do it right now? Oh, I'll do it another day. Another day when I'm redoing my about. Next time I redo my about, remind me. I need to put like the eighteen plus I have an emoji. This is eighteen plus. I need to put like that in there because I don't like it when people get sad. If you if you have me if you have me on on audible speaker, <laughs> fuzzy fuck. <laughs> if, if you have me on audible speaker at the workplace, shame on you. The term package management popularized is wrong by the home project does not relate to Kubernetes and should be avoided. It is causing immense confusion and chaos in the industry. <sighs> this is so true. Uh, really, really, really good headphones. <laughs> I was gonna say, if they leak, you're in trouble too, right? Use any of the following <laughs> terms instead: application builds utility, configuration management assistant. Helm is closer to Webpack. Are they open back? Ooh, uh, Helm is closer to Webpack, a Node.js build tool, than to APT, the Ubuntu package manager. Calling Helm a package manager is simply a lie. Let's look at an actual package manager in comparison, shall we? When installing open server, open open SSH server, one need execute apt install open open SSH server, and everything works because APT has been designed to work with Ubuntu Debian systems and all of those systems with regard to software installation and management follow the same standard. There is no intermediate validation step. Uh, no need to comb through the source code to make sure it works on your computer. No need to add extra dependencies that are not covered by the APT system itself. No need to change references from an external image dependencies into internal ones. No need to copy down the package specification file to ensure we have a copy of it. Everything just works. That is what a package manager provides. Package managers work because the distros that support them have a contract to provide what those package managers need. There's a concrete agreement between the creators of the distro, the Linux distro, and the creators of the package manager. Such a relationship does not exist between any would-be Kubernetes package manager, quote, nor could there ever be because every single Kubernetes cluster is a completely different. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Board to Shoot. This is co-working. Sorry, I don't have a topic thing for you. We're doing Kubernetes co-working, and right now I'm, I'm, I'm polishing up a, a write-up and a proposal for why I want to get rid of home at work. So... Yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any exclamation point commands yet. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have those yet. I'll get them. I promise. Right now, it's just all in the about. Beep boop boop. 
<laughs> you know there's going to be a hashtag uh, a pound a, pound, a bang fuck a fuck bang bang fuck <laughs> consider the process of installing and maintaining a helm chart first you identify the chart, copy the tarball down, uncompress it, look through the details with Helm template, read through the templates themselves, looking for bugs that replaces to customize. Check the... <laughs> there's no about. I told you to board to shoot. There's nothing. Stop trying. <laughs> there's, go to the about page. Yeah. You want me to help you? All right, here you go. Give about. There. See, I helped you. You can do that. It's not even up to date, but it's better than the uh check the git repo to see if any of the open issues related to you relates to you check change the references to external images from internal mirror copies of the images run the resource run the resource files through opa conf test to proactively ensure they meet security policies then attempt to install only to discover that you must create additional arbok resources before it will even run by the way two board to shoot if you have a question and your question is what do you think i should tell you to do to get into the tech world there you go uh most popular question i get and since you're new I'll, i kind of put that out there all right and then be able to undo all of that all of that customization once you remove it this is not package management this is software configuration building and installation helm is not a package manager and never was it was born out of the needs for application creators to make it easier to build applications, not install and manage them. Helm had good intentions, but Helm tried to provide an impossible solution. As much as naive tech blogger writers would, think, would have you think otherwise, Kubernetes is not anything like a Linux distribution. Every Kubernetes cluster is unique and has its own configurations and requirements that require a large amount of customization, even between development and production clusters. This fact makes creating a standard package manager impossible. It would be like creating an APT system that addresses every single different Linux distro available today. The fallacy that such applications can be managed in the same way simply is the source of much wasted time, money, and safety. <laughs> okay. One popular attempt at a universal solution to applications management and installation demonstrates how ludicrous this all is. The calendar, by the way, the schedule is the most important thing to board to shoot. So we're doing yoga in the morning. We do news every... If you wanted to see what happened since yesterday, we do news every day in the morning. Coffee time at 8. Uh, my time. And then we do yoga at 9. And then co-working in the morning. And then, you know, whatever, whatever we have left. We always do an AMA in the middle of the day. Sometimes around 12.45. I just go out, out, out the outside and walk and just ask questions. Um, one popular attempt at a universal solution to applications management and installation demonstrates how ludicrous this all is. The operator framework, originally from Red Hat, is a disastrous security failure requiring its OLM to have full cluster admin permissions in place and responsible for cluster security to, on the administrators who who are warned, despite their, their open tickets regard, despite the open tickets regarding this massive security flaw, to check quote check anything you install with it to be sure it's safe. <laughs> Imagine telling that to APT users. Oh, before you do apt install, make sure that package is safe. Do that apt install. First, make sure the package is safe. Uh... Keep in mind that Helm Tool with Tiller was, was shamed out of existence by the industry for attempting the same stupidity. Ironically, even though OLM, I'm not going to call it stupidity, we'll say the same thing. How about that? It's a little bit nicer. Barely. Barely nicer. Ironically, even though OLM has the equivalent of what I call enterprise root, root just not to one server, but to your whole inter fucking enterprise cluster, that's what it said originally, and I cleaned it up. When I just got tagged on Instagram by my wife. What the hell is she doing? Um, it is still unable to provide the simplicity of a package measure. We've come to expect when a distro is relatively locked down. Again, the problem is with the design assumption, not the technology. Kubernetes is not a Linux distro. It's anything but. Please stop perpetuating this dangerous comparison. Instead, we should be focused on facilitating duplication of application code and, and adding sustainable practices for maintaining that code over time, leveraging the same successful process evolved from software applications development. 
many not many do not like to hear this uh, uh, but you cannot administer a Kuber a Kubernetes cluster with software develop without software development skills and that is a big bad error on my part but um, software development skills notably GitOps, CICD, shell scripting, Go code review and YAML JSON configuration you simply cannot administer um, a collection of systems yeah uh, yep yeah. Yeah. Many don't like this, but you can administer a Kubernetes cluster without software skills. Uh, make uh, make sure your administrators uh, are learning, know or are learning, uh, are keeping these skills up to date. And I'm going to get shit for this. I'm sorry. I'm still going to write it. I don't care. For it, if Twitch had some coding channels. No, 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 no. Welcome. Very much welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, that's all I do. Yeah, I do coding, by the way. Just haven't done a lot lately. Because I'm a Kubernetes operator. So, yeah. But, but that boost that I showed you. Yeah, there's some bash coding in there. And a little bit of Go coding. Uh, I don't do a lot of Go coding. If you, those are the languages I recommend. Um, 232, I need to delete this. Give me a second here. Delete. Delete. Yank to 232. Go. All right. Z, uh, find package. Yep. Edit. He is lead. Did I say lead? I didn't say lead, did I? <laughs> if I did, I feel bad. I am. I would not consider myself lead. I, I consider myself. Uh, I've met lead coders. <laughs> I've met lead coders. I am not them. I am a wannabe lead coder. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I want to be lead coder, but yeah, no. I know enough to be dangerous and get paid gobs of money. Enough to, for my needs, anyway. This is not as much as you think. <laughs> All right. Instead. All right. So this has now been rectified. I. Uh, all right. That's all good. Packages don't seem. Okay. I. You know what? I think. I think that's it. Okay. So how did we come about discovering that missing Z? Well, I was going back through the titles. So let's keep doing that. So we see package management. That was the one I missed. So I'll keep going. Okay, that one doesn't need to go in. Uh, just what should I say on YouTube? Don't need that. Don't need that. Creating and managing certificates. Oh fuck! I gotta learn that. You gotta learn certificate management. Oh my god. Uh, wish list. Do I queue? No. In Codex Veritas, in truth is the code. Learn to code, people. Specifically, learn to code in Go, so you can read the most important applications in our world today, which are written in Go. Uh, enterprise, enterprise, the kind of job applications that are going to get you a job anyway. Helm procedure. Um, I mean, I don't know if I even want to follow that anymore, but it will. Uh, Microsoft runs Linux, identity, identify and remediate rather than gatekeep. Yes. Oh, I got to put that one in there. Oh my God. I'm so glad I found that one. I'm so glad I found that one. I am because that one is really related to uh, the OPA stuff. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a fucking long document, but I don't care. Um, I don't care. Did I say I don't care? Because I don't. All right. I mean, this is giving something to read. If they, if they, they probably won't, but give them something to read. Identify and remediate rather than gatekeep. All right, so let me make sure that this is you know suitable for work, um, etc. Okay, 
I recently abandoned a mini project and proposal for a valid to for a validate Helm plugin that used Zopia Gatekeeper to proactively check a chart to see that its configuration passed policies. Uh, then I realized this would need to be maintained in addition to the OPA Gatekeeper configuration itself. I realized this is redundant and unnecessary, but also not even optimal. Um, this was also, um, in fact, in in fact, others, uh, other more experienced uh, uh, community members uh, questioned. Uh, my gatekeeping approach. Uh, is that right? Is that a word? I guess not. Um, uh, uh, suggesting uh, an alternative focus on regularly and automatically uh, auditing uh, what is in the cluster, what is currently in the cluster. Uh, it's rather easy to get something past the gates and in, in, into your cluster. What more? Um, uh, and more important, uh, it is. It is more important to focus. God, I spelled this wrong. This is just notes. So, to focus on identifying problems and risks in your active cluster dynamically. This is what the Falco project aims to do. I like the emphasis on adaptability, which allows dynamic auditing to adjust parameters, much like machine learning, scanning software in other rooms of industry. Eventually, uh, we'll, be, we'll have bots patrolling our Kubernetes clusters just like, like they do everything else. This is um, this is really where I want to focus our attention rather than on dated gatekeeping approaches. All right. Well, that I can yank. And I can put it back into something else. What the hell is this? Oh, right. What was it? Where was the gatekeeper? All right. Z edit gatekeep which one okay number three all right um i'm gonna yank this ppp booyah booyah baby um all right do, 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 do. all right so that's now synchronized Synchronized. Uh, you got a question? Two board to shoot. Second weird question. I was I was applying to graduate level programs of CS. Uh, no, absolutely not. Unless you're going into quantum computing, uh, where you want to become a professor of computer science, I would never get a master's degree in CS. That's me. You are asking me? In fact, I wrote a thing on it. Yeah. I spelled it wrong. Sorry. Try this one. Uh, Zet query college. There's all my all my hits on college too. Yeah, I would not go to college if I were eighteen, and that that includes master's degree. You can everything you might want to do. You can get it, it's. It feels like the right thing to do because it's all real or, well organized. You know what I mean? It, it feels like you're gonna go get you know, some skills and it's going to be a happy time and you have good memories of college or everything. No. <laughs> unless, okay, unless unless you need the resources of college, like you need uh, something about networking, for example, like going to a community college and getting a degree in network engineering makes good sense because they're going to have a lot of Cisco hardware and stuff like that. How do you just discover me? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm I'm kind of like I don't I don't brand myself a lot, but you know that's the kind of thing. So yeah, spread the word because a lot of people don't know. Uh, I'm I'm retired. I retired from my other. I'm actually not retired anymore. So yeah, I don't waste your time. Honestly, that's my opinion. Spend the time doing th some. First of all, get an idea of what you want to do. People go to college because they don't know what they want to do a lot of times. It's a super expensive way to discover what you want to do with yourself. 
you find other ways to do that, you know, join a monastery or do yoga or go walk in the forest or pray or, you know, find something else and experiment with lots of different things. Don't waste your time and money at college to try to discover who you are. It is a good, it's a great way to do that. You know, you, people do, I mean, there's four reasons to go to college. And we talked about this before. There's four reasons to go to college. One, to get a skill so you can get a job. Two, to meet people. And I mean wives as well as people you might potentially work with later on, right? Friends, so like that. Three, to discover yourself, who you are, you know, figure out what your sexual preference is, what your favorite beer is, if you're going to drink beer, you know, uh, all of those things. Maybe if you explore, you know, different areas of philosophy and stuff like that. It's a phen phenomenal time to do that. And four, to learn to do your own laundry. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is a VOD. All this will be in a VOD. And four, to do your own laundry. You need to learn to be an independent person, to take care of yourself, to clean your bathroom when nobody's looking, and to be responsible and financially to take care of yourself. Ironically, they don't teach you anywhere in any education institution whatsoever how to take care of your personal finances, which is totally fucked up. And we, I actually did a huge rant on that the other day. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that topic and go back here. But, but those are, if you're asking questions about college, that's, you know, those are the things. So... If you, if you want to go, if you think you want to go back to college to get your master's degree, which by the way, I almost did many, 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 many times. My, my, my dead Christmas. It's a bamboo tree, by the way. It's, it's, I always have Christmas lights on that tree. I'm going to, I'm going to get an actual Christmas tree over there. I don't have it right now, but yeah. And, and if you want to see my fat ass doing yoga in the morning, that's another thing we do, but, um, so, 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 so yeah. So yeah, find out, you know, Yeah. Yeah, I would get a master's degree if I were going to go to computers and, and electronics. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of degrees that benefit from it, like electronics. Going to NC State, they've got a fantastic assortment of electronics. You know what I mean? And so it makes a lot of sense to go there to use the resource. But if you're gonna if you're gonna go get a master's in computer science, just buy the fucking book. It's right there. I got it. it costs seventy eight bucks. You can go through the whole book yourself. You can work at your own pace. You can demonstrate your output by producing a blog, doing the RDBX method, read, write, and explore, experiment, write about it. You can demonstrate, you can produce tons and tons and tons of verifiable proof that you've learned computer science by using the exactly the same books and pay like one thousandth of a percent of the amount of cut you would take to go get a master's. And a little piece of paper, if you think you need that little piece of paper, that master's degree, you're sadly mistaken. All the fan companies don't even require it anymore. They require proof of learning. They don't care whether you went to a college or something. So wasting your money to pay for their fucking shitty football team with your tuition is a bad idea, in my opinion. There, I said it. <laughs> so, um, and, we, and if we don't start like speaking up against this shit, it's just going to continue. And that's the worst part. They're they're bringing they're they're paying people the esports now because they're, they think they can't get people to go to college unless they have esports in their college. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? All right. So I'm still supposed to be working here. All right. Back to work. The whole process, you know, a lot of new life skills. You really do. That's what I'm saying. You can move away. There's tons of other ways. Learn English as a second language. Like learn to teach English as a second language. If you're a native English speaker, go, go abroad, Teach English to people. Make money in the process. Stay in a hostel if you want to, but do whatever you want. To. There are lots of ways to explore the world that don't involve like a huge fucking price tag. I went on a study. I didn't. I, people went on a study abroad one summer for Russian. They paid six thousand dollars to go on a study abroad for like a month and a half. I went for two full months, got a job as a cruise director, as a translator, and I made four thousand dollars. And I got a free. I got a free trip to Russia. And I got all the Russian training I could ever want. And I was able to take my wife with me on top of all of that. There are ways to, there are creative ways to get around these requirements that society thinks you're supposed to do. You just, I think you just have to spend more time looking for it. It seems like it's the easiest thing to do is to turn the key and pay money and you're going to dump knowledge in your head because they want you to think that it doesn't work that way. Uh, don't live in your parents' basement and go to college in your hometown. Hell yeah. I think, uh, you can't live in your parents' basement. You can live in your parents' basement. Why the fuck not? Back to work. <laughs> exactly. Back to work. Um, 
actually, I think I've got all my things. Let's go back and review. So uh, I went back and forth to make sure I didn't review any of my good writing that's going to go my proposal to justify my positions. That's what I'm doing right now. I have a lot of uh, pretty dramatic conclusions that are not necessarily going to be expected when I propose all this stuff. So I need to include the documents, the notes I wrote that, that document my arrival at that conclusion so that they can understand why. Uh, installing Steam, no. Rust community is insufferable, no. Lurkers tr turning my words to, into their profit, no. Helm all the things, no. Helm us plugins, no. Customize, no. Um, operate lifecycle management is dangerous. I already put that in. Careers conventions is in. Streaming content categories, no. IRL streaming cat, no. I applied to Twitch partner today. Yeah, forget that. They're never going to put me in. My boobs aren't big enough. Uh, polyglot programming, JavaScript, C, Go, Bash, Python. Uh, learning, knowing what to do and how to do it. Um, keep a solutions mindset. I'm learning to install VMware Harbor locally. This is stuff from long ago. Uh, 2.16 to be precise. Oh no, the 11th actually. The 12th, the 12th, the 12th of November, okay. How to organize conferences on in Twitch? No. I streaming gear, some emoji emotes. I think it's it. I think I'm ready. All right, so the next thing we need to do, first of all, I want to save this. Um, and then in the readme, I want to put uh, some some examples. I'm gonna I'm gonna link to some examples here. Uh, examples. So we're gonna link to HTTPS. Um, uh, GitHub.com, RDX, Rob. Uh, what do we call it? Kate's app. Dash. Uh, NFT, no feature discovery, and uh, node feature discovery, and we need to link to the other one. I did a Jupyter Hub one, uh, Jupyter Hub, and JHub. So those are my links, and I think I'm good to go. In fact, I might not even need to uh, publish this anywhere else. I think I can just leave it out here in the wild. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. <sighs> um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, I just have to build it into a web page uh, for no particular reason. Uh huh. Kate's, we should do kates.github. github.io. No. Rawxrob.github.io slash uh, Kate's app. Yep. All right. All righty then. Index.html. All right. We're going to build it. Boom. And let's test it, shall we? Link it link, 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 and links. I don't like that it has like the two different things there, but whatever. Uh... And one of these is the title, and the other one is, you know, yeah. <sighs> All right, we can just do it this way. Here's the actual web page. I don't like it how it does it twice. It annoys me. That annoys me. And I, it's like a problem with the the actual um thing. Yeah, it is. It is a problem. It, because it actually, it's a problem with the template. And I have my own template, but I don't want to do it right now. I wrote my own template, but this is a Pandoc thing. Uh huh. I mean, if we take the title out there, see, it's got two. Why does it have two? I know not. I know not. All right. Reload. There we go. Uh, do, 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 do. The closest I'm building. This stuff that I'm building right here is just, these are just public samples. They're fine. Uh, the 
this the work that I'm doing is all is all on prem mm -hmm. for a big old company. Uh huh. Yeah, my work is I work on prem completely. We do have a Google presence, but it's we're we're because it's HPC. High performance computing is does not happen in Google. It's too expensive. And I actually really like that I'm in this little niche because it's on-prem and I really believe in on-prem. In fact, I think it's going to go back to on-prem. I really do. It's fucking expensive to do GPU. Okay, I'm going to make a conclusion for you right here. So we talked earlier before about how NVIDIA is going to dominate the world and all the programmers are going to become data science experts with learning machine learning. And there's going to be front-end people and a tiny you know, contingent of back-end cloud, cloud native kind of people. And the big contingent of, of like programmers is going to be the people doing the models because the models are going to be everything being about models. Models, models, models. So, and the people that are doing the models are going to need a lot of high-performing computer infrastructure in the cloud and they're not going to do it on Amazon, and they're not going to do it on Google. In fact, the, Regal, the reason that Google and Amazon, and Amazon is doing Basecamp and all this stuff is because they know that the future is machine learning, and the future of machine learning is on-prem because it's too fucking expensive to do it on Amazon's hardware or whatever. It's You cannot Elasticsearch like a V100 $6,000 GPU at maximum speed and have that thing just running forever. People can afford to have those kind of costs on-prem, but they cannot afford it. They cannot afford to do that in the cloud. And frankly, there can be a lot, a lot of the you know standard, you know, shitty microservices applications like that. Yeah, sure. Put that in the cloud. Put that in the cloud on Amazon. The on-prem HPCs, the HPC machine learning stuff, the high performance computing machine learning stuff is not ever going to be in the cloud. Uh, unless they dramatically change their pricing model. And if they don't change their pricing model, guess what? That means the future of computing is going to be on-prem, which I, which warms my heart because that means it's decentralized again. Thank God. So that the machine learning, the machine learning is driving on-prem. Machine learning is driving on-prem, and you can see this because because these big behemoths see the writing on the wall, and they're creating all these on-prem offerings because they want they still want to offer the turnkey stuff. You have hybrid. Yep. HPC GPU bandwidth and the GCP for data like data data analytics. Yeah. And and that's probably how it'll be. People will still do their microservices and their public facing and their data analytics and and all of that. They'll do that in the cloud, fine. But the real like the real, you know, diamonds of the con of the company, that HPC GPU says stuff, you know, the model data the most important thing the company's gonna be doing is gonna be these data models. And when they do those models and machine learning stuff, that stuff's all going to be on-prem. That's that's the business advantage the companies are going to be providing, and that's going to be on-prem. And that they're going to pay fucking bank for that. You watch. The big companies are going to pay. They already are. They already are, man. When they drop six grand on a, V1, a single V100 GPU just to run on-prem, you know that they mean business. And so I personally think, I mean, Kubernetes, dev, Kubernetes for DevOps and microservices and web shit and Node and all that stuff, that's a thing for, for sure. But Kubernetes for high performance machine learning is a much bigger fucking deal, and it's gonna come. It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And and so yeah, that's why I own a bunch of Nvidia stock. God, I wish I had the money. I wish I hadn't started a company. I wish I put all that money into Nvidia stock. <laughs> I would be, dude. If people put money in Bitcoin and Dogecoin, I'm like, that's cute. <laughs> I would be pumping every fucking dollar I had into NVIDIA. If I had it, if I had it, I would call me a bad person. I don't give a shit. When the arm thing gets thrown out, because it's going to, and they're, they're going to be able to keep it, keep arm. When they get a hold of arm, NVIDIA, NVIDIA stock is going to fucking skyrocket. It already did. The last three years, it already skyrocketed. And I've been saying to buy NVIDIA for five years. Yeah. It's greed. I know it's greed. <laughs> it's just stock market greed. Dude, if I oh, when I started Skillstack, when when crypto started coming out, if I had had half a fucking clue, I would have bought as much Nvidia. And I knew it. I knew it. I was telling people to do it too, and I just didn't have the money because I just started my own business. Oh, I go to I go to art galleries and, and crawls and stuff. I talk to people all the time, and they're like they're like, oh, so you're on computers? What's the single thing? These are like ultra rich people, right? Ultra ultra fucking rich people. I'm like. What should I do? What should I invest in? What's the, what stock's gonna go nuts? What what stock is gonna Nvidia? Every time, the fuck Apple, it's Nvidia. 
Apple has to get down on its hands and knees and suck NVIDIA's cock to do anything. Can you tell me the Disney password? I don't remember it. The Disney password? Um, I don't know. Here, just a sec here. I will, I will attempt to find it for you. All right. Um, I'm going to have to go on silent here for a second. All right, she's happy. I had to. I had to <laughs> the, the light from my screen like lights me up. Of course, this is not a flattering angle. It makes me look fatter than I actually am. I'm pretty damn fat, but not that fat. I don't. I got to get over that. I really have to get over it. I I am so uptight about my belly. I can get over that. Anyway, back to what we're doing. What the actual issue for them is now that they probably won't get ARM. You don't think they will? That's really a big deal. Uh, if if anybody, if if the government has half a clue, they'll they'll stop that. Because talk about monopoly. God damn, that is like a big fucking monopoly right there. Um, I'm done. So I just need to prepare and move this over, and I'm actually done with this task for the day. Uh, and I need to get this. I need to get this into the hands. Uh, your programmer perfect <laughs> oh that's nice thank you for saying so <laughs> i got dad bod grandpa bod 300 percent ago yeah yeah all right so what, what are we doing here i'm going for kubernetes app kubernetes app actually check it i think i can do this should actually say the website. Yeah, where is it? Where is it? Settings. Oh, I stopped making it a, 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 a site. I did. I got to go back to making a site. Oh, there it is. It's already there. See? I told you. Wait. Did I not push? Oh, I didn't push a change. Okay. I pushed a change. Status. Uh, add dash a dot commit. Um, add more content. <laughs> uh, that's a horrible commit message. Don't ever make horrible commit messages like that. That was a horrible one. Yeah, uh, in case you're wondering. So git push. Yep. And, and yep. And now we should be able to reload this puppy at some point. I think I don't like is how long it takes to refresh. That's actually rather annoying. But it is what it is. God damn it. God damn it. Too fucking, it takes too fucking long. This is what I use Netlify for instead. It's less faster. It is. It's faster, I'm telling you. Um, I need music. All right. 
we are almost done with this task. I need to just check my examples. I need to put all of that stuff. I need to pull that stuff locally. And I'll be done with this task. Hey, 10x. Uh, sometimes idle. Oh, yeah. Okay, big GPU. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're idle, but I can't use them. I wish I could. This, I'm telling you, the big place to make money is to help people identify their idle CPU. GPU time. It's because, you know, you're paying for that money, man. It's like, this. It, it, you can only even do that in the cloud. If you don't have the cloud, you're fucked. So, once again, you want cloud. Oh, there we go. All right, so, so this is my final proposal document it's like my detailed version um and it's like the write-ups of why i don't like helm and how i came to it uh the problems with high helmet operator uh renting out gps oh yeah that's gonna be a thing i'm telling you that's gonna be a thing there's gonna be, i think i'm predicting that the movement for on-prem hpc it's going to leave a lot of on-prem people in the elastic computing business besides Amazon. In fact, Amazon should be fucking worried because the, these bigger companies, they need to have this GPU all around. And they're using most of it, by the way. But sometimes they don't use it. And they're going to need to be able to make profit off of their internal clusters. And, I mean, it's still possible that the cloud people, the the, the Googles and the Azures and the and uh, you know the Amazons could come in and actually make a viable elastic HPC offering. They don't have one right now. Right now, anybody anybody who has half a financial brain says, "Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not paying that." And and they 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 spend a fraction of that money and bring it all on prem. So because they're going to be doing, they're going to be burning, they're going to be burning through models every day, all day, and. So I'm telling you, there is a, somebody wants, I'm going to give you another, here it is. I do this all the time. Louis Senti got me the other day. I keep giving good ideas for Silicon Valley startups and whatever. Here's an idea for a startup. Make a startup that is extremely machine learning proactive and identifies idle GPU on particular systems and allows it to be sold to, to a second party. That and then what you're going to have is you can have partnerships between large organizations, and then they will they will partner to do other stuff. And even if they don't partner like that, it will allow intra departmental sharing of 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 cluster resources with priority given to the primary holders. That that does not exist yet. Right now, that does not exist. So there's like taints and tolerations and stuff like that. You could write some cloud software that leverages taints and tolerations and that kind of thing, Kubernetes to to do that you could have you could allow it to distribute and say okay you have priority and basically what you're doing is you're 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 basically you're doing the same thing as a SETI project right you're you're renting out your idle gpus in your cluster to other areas of your company without giving up priority processes for those things so you say yeah you can run over here but if you if you need extra power we have some uh, and and then that that there's there's money to be made there because there's a lot of there's a lot of idling going on right now on prem, and it costs a lot of money, but it's still cheaper than going elastic and going up with Amazon or something. So it's it's you know it's going to be really interesting. The thing that's interesting about it too is that because because other departments you probably have a high performance computing group who like is really kicking ass doing a bunch of hyper, you know machine learning models, and then you have other people who are in the company who don't need machine learning as much. They, don't have, they definitely don't need it enough to run their own project. So they can farm out and, and do it. And so you're going to start to see, I think you're going to start to see high performance computing uh, groups uh, bubble up in organizations all over the place. And they may even be separate from the traditional cluster, Kubernetes clusters for services, microservices, stuff like that. And that's exactly what's happened in my organization. And that happened a long time ago. That happened like two years ago, three years ago. So, because there's a seriously big uh, machine learning requirement. So, yeah, it's where the money is, man. If I had the money to, if I had, if I had to, if I had the cojones to go take, make my own company, that's what I would do. 
There's a number of things I would do to start my own company. If I were going to like, just if all I cared about was make, making gobs and gobs of money, catering to the enterprise, that's what I would do. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Dude, you could even have, you could even have like a pricing model based on how much time you save them. <laughs> and like, oh, we don't get paid unless you save money. Yeah, and then they wouldn't have any risk. And they would be like, hell yeah, I'll put that in there. Yep. Hey, code that shit. Hey, stop coding that shitty fintech stuff. Work on stuff like that. <laughs> um, This is working. So the only thing that's not is this. Make sure this is working. No future discovery is working. Yep. So here's my, my get. Um... I have to finish flushing this out. That is probably going to happen tonight uh, and tomorrow. So, so I'm still doing this sample example of documentation. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take a break, and I'm going to I'm going to mute. I'll turn the music on. Uh, you will see me working from my work laptop because I'm going to be uh, pushing some of this stuff over to work. So. I'll still be here. I'll just be co-working probably from the other chair for a bit. So I'm turning the music back up. I'll put my working off screen notification. Check. Let me change mics too. Check one, two, check, check. Wow, that sounds weird. But it seems to be working. One and a two and a three and a four. -a. I feel like there's uh, something coming from another signal too. Check one, two, check one, two. Yep. How about now? It's just got the one signal, right? Yeah, I can hear it. It is a little bit echoey though. I feel like there's another mic picking up from somewhere. Check one and a two, check one, check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. check. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just losing my mind. I could have swore there's some other sound coming in. All right. A little bit more static on this one, but it's not too bad. Also, the sound is really loud. How about that? That way you can at least hear me, even though the sound's louder. <sighs> Okie dokie. Best language ever. Okay, keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that. Take this trash out. I'll be right back. Oh, you're going to love that.
check whether it's static. Nice. My repo, my public repo into my local directory to be get pull with HTTPS. What other one do I need? I need the two samples. I need to work on the samples that I, I've got. I've yet to work, do some more work on those. Um, this is enough for me to post. I need to cross post this. I don't know whether to post this to our internal, to our internal personal notes. I'm gonna put post it to my internal personal notes, I guess, because I don't know if this is significant enough.
Hey. You're currently watching me. <laughs> Good video in my break. Good morning, Ava. And I thought I'd pop into Twitch and tip you about the Ola video editor as a Linux alternative. Oh, I hadn't heard of that. Thank you for that. Love the Mandela. <laughs> the Mandela. Oh, yeah, isn't that great? I love that quote. Yes. I don't like that the purple is like, you can't even see the purple. May all your choices reflect your dreams, not your fears. Your hopes, I think it is. Is it hopes? I can't, I can't even see it from here. I know. Soothe music. I'm over here because I'm doing work stuff that's on a, I don't, you know, it's, whenever I'm sitting over here, as a as a rule, I'm usually going to be doing like work stuff that I can't let anybody see. So it's just music. Music's kind of loud though, so I'll be quiet. Thank you for the link.
All right, folks, I'm going to call it for today. I got my stuff all posted. We're at the end of a co-working session here. And I am good to go. Tonight, I will be coming back for another uh, session. Go ahead and just put my laptop down for a second. Um, I will be coming back for another session to flesh out my examples. So I have two examples that I need to finish fleshing out and porting those over internally so that I can show them off tomorrow. And then I'll call a meeting for tomorrow, hopefully at three or so. Um, but uh, so that's, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, cancel the stream. I'll put some fish on so that we have a nice, um, we're gonna have a nice uh, break in the VODs, so the VODs have meaning. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this session down, stay tuned for the fish, and same music, same meditative music if you want, but um, I'll be back here tonight at nine to do the co